Hey everyone, in this feature training video, I'm going to be going over bulk updating assets. So there's a lot of great reasons to bulk update assets and it gives you a lot of flexibility to quickly update, change, or add information to any of your assets. So let's walk through how this works. First, I'm on my manage assets screen and I'm, over, I'm going to click over here on bulk actions. So then update assets and that's going to bring up this screen to uh, with some instructions on how to bulk update your assets. So first you need to download your list of assets, then you got to edit your Excel sheet, and then save and upload the file. But do note there is a limit of 2,000 assets at a time, so if you have more assets that you need to update it, um, you need to break them out into separate spreadsheets so that you can then upload once you're, um, once you're done making all of your edits. So here first, I'm gonna download my list of assets and you can see I've already downloaded one. And I really recommend um, saving a backup. So since I already downloaded one, I'm just gonna call this one my backup. That way I have a backup file before I make any changes to my system, just in case I accidentally do something wrong, I have a way to go back. So let me grab that file open it up so since I already saved a backup we're good to go and to start making edits now there's a couple things that I recommend you do um, just to make sure that you're not changing any columns or updating any assets that you do not intend to so say for instance I want to only make um, some changes to the make and model field. What I can actually do is come over here and highlight these other fields, or the columns, excuse me, and delete them. Now, this is not going to delete them from the assets when I update uh, and upload this spreadsheet, but it will just make sure that I'm only updating this information and um, and just make sure that I'm not going to be, you know, accidentally deleting or adding a, a, a value to any of those other fields. Now, I also want to note that it's really important to not change this column because the system needs to have this identifier here in order to see what assets uh, need to be updated and what fields or, or values need to be changed. So definitely good practice and a must to not update any of that. So say for instance I come over here and I'm just going to um, add in some you know values for these data and pull that down. Um, obviously you can make any changes you need. Uh, it's for a number field, a currency field, uh, so on and so forth. Now, when I upload this spreadsheet, it will only add uh, the make and model field to these assets if it's not already added to these, and it will update that field with this value. So tools will get uh, the test value and uh, also the option one value under make. So we can see this uh, by updating that. So let's go ahead and upload our CSV. And we see that um, since I have all of those assets included in the spreadsheet, it's going to say 21 assets are updated, even though we're really only updating, um, you know, that the first few there. So we can see if I click on that, uh, which assets will be updated, I can hover over this question mark, and we'll see that model field will now have a value of test and make field now have a, uh, a value of option one. I can go down the line here and if we go to some of these assets that didn't have any updates you'll hover over them and you'll see that no updates are actually going to be made. So I can click confirm. Now if I show our make and model field, throw this in a list, I can see all of those values have been updated in our system. So overall a uh, pretty straightforward process but you know there's always a couple little things that um, you need to be careful of and so some of those best practices of not uh, um, you know editing any of the column names or making any changes to the asset to update field 
is definitely one of them. The other is removing columns and assets that you don't intend to update. This way um, you won't accidentally enter in a value or you know pull something down a little bit farther than you intended to and that would then add that field and value to that asset which you didn't want to do. Um, so that definitely good practice there. The other thing is you can still add information here. So say for instance I have a new field. Um, so let's just say test field one and I want to add in some values here and I'm just going to say this is a numeric field because I'm going to enter in numbers. Um, now this new field is going to be created and these values will be added sorry to these first six assets. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. We'll do the same thing. So we see there's a new field that's going to be created. It's test field one. And I can specify that, yep, that is a number field. And if I go to, let's see, here, yep, it's test field one is now added. I can confirm and now if I refresh my page oh, it just popped up there test field one and those values are added to my system so there you go um, I hope you find this useful if you have any questions please reach out to us and let us know how we can improve this video and this article um, and best of luck thanks